Unit 8, Lesson 2, Graphing Conic Sections. In this lesson, we want to determine features of conic sections from their equations and then graph conic sections from those equations. We're going to go through each conic section on their own. Remembering that a parabola with standard form, y minus k equals a times x minus h squared, and the reason it's written like this is so that both of them are the subtracted values. Remember, we usually put this on the other side as a plus, or x minus h equals a times y minus k squared. In fact, I don't care if you write that on the other side. This is standard form, but if you want to write it on the other side, you can. They have vertex h, k, and their focal length c is 1 over 4 times the absolute value of whatever that number is. I'll remind you the focus is always inside the parabola, and the vertex is always halfway between the focus and the directrix. The focal width, which is basically how far it is at the focus, how far apart those are, is 4 times c. So for each, we're going to write them in standard vertex form, give the vertex, the focus, and the equation of the directrix, graph it, the focus, and the directrix. So I have minus 8y equals minus x squared, which if I rewrite, I get y equals 1 eighth of x squared. Because a is positive and it's a y equation, we know it opens upwards. So I know that it opens upwards. I know that the focus is 0, 0. The focal length which is c, again how far the focus is, is 1 over 4 times the absolute value of a is 2, so I would go up 2 for the focus, meaning I would go from 0, 0 up 2 to get to 0, 2. The directrix goes now down 2, so is the line y equals minus 2. The domain is minus infinity to infinity, and the range is from 0 to 0. And then I got a couple other points here. I could have graphed them by our normal way of 1 eighth. If we go over 4, we should be going up um, 4 squared, which is 16. An eighth of that it would be 2, so I went up 2 and this. Or I could have done from the focus, 4 times 2 is 8, so I would have gone 4 out this way and 4 out this way. Again, I got another set of points by going out 8. I should go up 64. I'm going to go up an eighth of that, so I went up 8 and 8 to get my points. And this one, I have y squared minus 4x minus 2y equals 3. Again, we're going to have to complete the square in order to get it in standard form. So I put all the x's on, or all the y's, the squared terms are on one side, and the non-squared term on the other side. So I managed to rewrite this one by adding, I had to divide this by 2, and then square that, that's 1, so I added 1 to both sides. I rewrote this one as something squared, and then I factored out the 4 that's common. This is now in that standard form. Again, if I wanted to, I could divide by the 4 and then subtract the 1 like this. So that's the normal way of doing it, at least, is to divide by the 4 and then leave that as an x plus 1. Again, you could have subtracted the 1 here and subtract the 1 there. I would also accept it, but this is the standard form. And that means that the vertex is minus 1, 1, and it's a 1 fourth. Again, because it's an x equation, it opens either right or left. A is positive, so it's going to open right. And the vertex is the minus 1, 1. So I put minus 1, 1 for the vertex. C, which is the focal length, is 1 over 4 times the absolute value of A, which is now 1, which means it goes 1 in inside because, again, it opens this way. So this has to go 1 to the right to be inside. And then the directrix has to be 1 on the other side, so that will be the line x equals minus 2. The domain, we can only put in numbers from minus 1 to infinity from the equation, and the range will cut out anything from minus infinity to infinity. For other points, we could find the focal width, which is 4 times that, meaning we're going to go down 2 and up 2 from there. Or we could have gone, if we move... 2 to the left, we should move up 4 normally, but this is a fourth of that, so only we only went up 1. When we move out 4, we should go 16. Again, we took a fourth of that, which is 4. That can give us other points on the thing. And this is a parabola with a vertex of minus 1, 5. The y-intercept is 4, and it, um, it opens downwards, so I knew it went down. The solution, we know that y is um, minus 5 y a y because it opens up and down and then I put a times x plus 1 squared I have to solve for a 0 4 if I put 0 4 in there that means a is minus 1 telling us that it opens downward meaning the 
Of course, the vertex we already knew, but C is now 1 fourth, 1 over the absolute value. 4 times the absolute value of A, and then the focus again, we have to keep that inside, so I'm going to go down a fourth from this vertex. So this is minus 1, 5. I'm going to go down a fourth from that 5, giving me 4 and 3 fourths. The directrix will go up a fourth from that 5 to give us the line y equals 5 and a fourth. Of course, we can put anything in this equation. We can only get out minus infinity up to 5. For circles, we already know how to graph circles that have standard form. They have a center and a radius. If we're given the general form, you're going to have to complete the circle for both the x and the y in order to come up with the center and the radius. Here the center, of course, is minus 6. This is minus 3. And then the radius is um, the square root of 20 or 2 square roots of 5. And I'll let you look at the other one. For an ellipse that have a standard form, again, remember, the biggest is the one we call A. So in this one, the major axis is going to be horizontal. and this one, the major axis will be vertical because it's um, connected with the Y. They have a center of HK, both of them. The A is the um, length, the, um, ma the length along the major axis from the center to the vertex. And then the focal length is from the center to the focus along both of those along the major axis and then along the minor axis will be the value of B and that will go in whatever direction the minor axis is. So if I have an equation 16x squared plus 25y squared equals 1600 and I want to graph, I also want to find the foci, the vertices, and the co-vertices and find the domain and range. So first I have to get it into the form where I have an x and a, nothing in front of these um, x and the y, so I'm dividing by the 1600. Again, they also have them equal to 1, so I'm going to divide by that 1600. I get x squared over 100 and y squared over 64 is 1. And then a has to be 10 because this is a squared, it's the biggest one. I also know that means that the major axis is horizontal because it's connected with the x. The center, there's nothing subtracted here and there's nothing subtracted here, so the center is 0, 0. So I would go out 10 this way and 10 this way. B is the value associated with the other variable. Of course, this is B squared. So if I take the square root, I get 8. So I'm going to go up 8 and down 8. And then basically, I'm going to try to make that look like a parabola shape. But I also want to graph where the, fo um, the foci are. So I have to find the value of C. Remember that the equation had a plus is the one that says A squared minus B squared. So I take 100 minus 64 and get 36. So C is 6. So I went out 6 this way and 6 this way from the center. So they're plus or minus 6, 0. The domain, well, the values for the X go from minus 10 to 10 included. And then the range, they go from minus 8 to 8 included. If I'm given it in the general form and I want it in standard form, I first have to complete the square for each variable. So first I'm going to factor out the GCF from the X terms and I'm going to factor out the GCF from the Y terms. I'll take that other number to the other side. Then I'm going to complete the square inside here. So I divide by 2, square that, that's 1. So I added 1 on the inside. And then I take 4 divided by 2 and square that, that's 4, so I added 4 on the inside. So why did I, instead of adding 1 and 4, did I add 3 and 20? Well, this one had a 3 in front, so when I put 1 on the inside, I was really adding 3. And when I put 4 on the inside here, there's a 5 out there, so I really added 20. So on this side, I need to add 3 and 20, which gives me 3 times x plus 1 squared plus 5 times this becomes y minus 2 squared is equal to, I add those up, I get 36. And now again, I want it in standard form, so I have to divide everything by that 36. And I will get these cancel to give me a 12 in the denominator. These cancel to give me 7.2 in the denominator is 1. The center, of course, is what I'm subtracting, minus 1, 2. C, the value of C, is the a squared minus the b squared again. A, of course, is the larger one. It, this, again, is on the horizontal axis because the bigger number is the 12. So then I get 4.8. So now how do I find the vertices in the center? Well, I'm going to go from the minus 1, 2, and I'm going to go out A, A being um, the square root of 12. So I would go out the square root of 12 here. So I'm going to take the minus 1, and I'm going to subtract square root of 12, 
and add the square root of 12, giving me approximate vertices. Then to find the foci, I'm going to go from the minus 1 and go out plus or minus the square root of whatever for c, which would give me these values. And then for the covertices, I would take the square root of, root of b and go, now we're, well, now we're at the 2 in the y direction, so I would take 2 plus or minus that square root of 7.2 to get approximate covertices.